If you're looking for an easier way to streamline your tasks and projects, then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to be going into detail on how you can set up a checklist system for your tasks and get a high level view on exactly how far each project has gone in terms of completion rate. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated using Airtable and Zapier. This allows them to work more on building their business instead of getting stuck in the admin and day-to-day -day grind of the business. So if that's of interest, definitely check out our channel, click subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, all that good stuff. All right, so as I promised though, let's just jump into my screen and we are gonna get into this actual uh, base that we're gonna build in Airtable. So quick high level synopsis here is we are gonna look at two major data points. We're gonna have projects and we're gonna have tasks. Tasks are finite things that we can measure and projects are the long, like more macro view and tasks are gonna to belong to a project. So multiple tasks per project, okay? That's the high level and we're gonna actually build this together from scratch just right here. So here we go, we have these two different tables and the first thing we're gonna do, let's, let's assume that we've got a couple of uh, projects going, right? And so I'm just gonna label these really simply, project one, project two, project three. Now, you will have, I'm sure, a lot of different data points for your own projects. You'll probably link them to your clients. You'll probably have different ways of, you know, other things that you're taking uh, into consideration here. Maybe you have agreements that are signed. Maybe you have payments received. All of these things you're gonna track at, you know, and relate to your projects. We're not gonna do that for this video. We're just interested in tasks. So let's jump into tasks. And we're gonna build this linked relationship first from our project to our tasks. And so we're linking our project table to our task table. And of course, on this end, we're gonna allow it to link to multiple records, right? Which means that multiple tasks can be assigned to each project. Okay, we are going to go ahead and save this. And then when we pop into tasks, we're gonna see the reciprocal of this relationship built. Because when we link projects to tasks, so too are we linking tasks to projects, right? So what's true on one side needs to be true on the other. So here's the relationship to project. And when we look in here, we're gonna to wanna to turn this off because we only want each task to relate to one and only one project. So this is what we call a one-to-many relationship. One project can link to many tasks, but not the other way around. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And you can have a lot of different ways that you name your tasks. Very often what we see is tasks inside of a single select field. So maybe you have a finite number of types of tasks. So let's suppose that you had like a very, uh, very linear setup to your project task relationship. So you have onboarding, you have uh, payment, you have, uh, you know, uh, begin work. And I'm, I'm just gonna make, you know, very simple high level examples here. You have uh, submit for review, and you have uh, work completed. Let's say that it was a simple five-step solution like that, and that was the same for each project. Okay, so what you might expect to see then, let's just look at project one. I'm going to go ahead and create five records for project one. I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna go through all these different tasks. So we've got onboarding, we've got payment, we've got begin work, we've got submit for review, and we've got work completed, right? So these, I'm gonna move project over. And so these tasks are, uh, are all applied to project one, right? Now here's the big difference that I alluded to at the beginning of this video, that each task has to be a finite thing. So when I think of a task, there are a couple of variables that I attach to a task. Number one, it has to have a person in charge. That is somebody who is responsible for completing that task, right? So that's number one. Number two is it has to have an assigned due date. That is the only way that you can track if that task is on schedule or not, right? And number three is it has to be either completed or incomplete, right? So it's either done or it's not done. And there's no, it's not a task if it's like, 
partially done, you know, in progress. I, I wouldn't call that a task. I like to have a binary or Boolean, either yes or no, this is either done or it's not done. Okay, so those three things we're gonna build into our database here. So let's go ahead and add the collaborator field. And this will allow you to bring in anybody who has this database shared with them. In this case, this database is only shared with me, so I'm the only collaborator in this workspace. But if I were sharing this with my team, they would also have access here as well, and I could select anyone uh, from there to assign this to. Actually, I'm gonna rename this to person in charge. All right, the next one that I mentioned is it has to have a due date, otherwise it's not a task. So let's go ahead and bring a date field in here. Uh, of course, you could also add time, other things like that. I think that's a little unnecessary for this, but you could if you needed to. Um, let's go ahead and assume that these things kind of just progress through on a day-by-day -day basis. There we go. And then this is going to be my completed checkbox. Again, it's a Boolean, meaning it's either yes or no, right? So either it's done or it's not done and a story. All right, so these are the things at a minimum that I would require for any task table. Now, we want to go ahead and give each task a unique ID. And just having this task type here, if I were to you know, put this into the name, this isn't unique because I'm going to then come in and create all of these tasks again for project two. Let's go ahead and expand that really quickly. Right, so project two, this exists for project two, and this will also exist for project three, right? Let's go ahead and just set this up briefly, and we're gonna go ahead and group by our projects. So really what we've done is we've said, look, we have these five steps and they apply to every project. Okay, so we have those here now, and the reason that we don't wanna just use the task name in the name field is because this does not tell us enough information. If we just repeated this over and over again, we want this name field, this, this field right here, to be as unique as possible and to tell us exactly what that record is. And if all it says is onboarding, then we don't know onboarding for what, right? It's not enough information for the name. And so for this, we're gonna create what I would call a task ID. And it's a simple formula. We're gonna use a concatenate formula which strings together multiple pieces of data. And in this case, we're gonna to string together the task itself separated by a space and a dash and a space. And then we're going to bring in the project and we're gonna save that. So now we have a, a task ID that changes with both the task and the project that is assigned to that record. And this is a much better way of naming each of these tasks in a unique format. Okay, so this is the general build that we would have for projects as they relate to tasks. But let's take this all the way with giving ourselves a status tracker on the project level to see where our tasks are for that project. So let's create a couple scenarios here. Let's say we have a completed project where all the tasks are done. Let's say we have one that's you know 60% done, three of the five tasks, and another one that is 20% completed, uh, one of the five tasks. So how can we build this so that when we're looking at the projects, we can see how far along they are in the process automatically? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is look up our count of total tasks. This is a three-step process, and the first one is finding out how many tasks are we connected to. So I'm gonna call this the task count, and I'm gonna use the count field. Now the count field is going to look at the linked relationship here in our tasks table, uh, or I'm sorry, it's gonna look at the linked relationship in our project table that links to tasks. And so it's gonna to count to those, and of course we know that each project is linked to five tasks. So we would expect to see fives for each of these. But the reason that we don't wanna just key in a five is because if somebody adds a task, let's suppose that one got added for this. This is a new task assigned to Gareth, and this is due 10-5, let's say. All right, so now we want this to be dynamic, right? We want this to change with 
the tasks. And so now, now that we added that new one to task, or I'm sorry, to project two, it's reflected here. So that's the first step, task count. Now we need to get a task completion. So over here, we're gonna add a new field. We're gonna call it completion count. And we can write a simple formula here that says if completed, then be one, and that's it. It's an easy formula. And all we have here is anytime a box is checked, we're counting one. And if it's not checked, there's nothing here. And so now what we can do back here, we can do the task completed count. And we'll use a roll up field for this. And on this roll up, we're going to look at that new field that we just built, the completed count, and we're going to take a sum. And what this is going to do is add up the number of ones that are connected for each project. So for project one, we have five. For project two, we have three. For project three, we have one. So five, three, one is what we would expect to see. Five, three, one. Perfect. Now, the last step of this is the task completion percentage. And this is a simple formula. We have all the pieces in place now where we're going to say, look at the task completed count and divide that by the total task count and then output this data in a percentage. You can add decimals if you'd like. I'll add them just to show that extra step. And here we are. So this is saying, look, project one has five checked boxes and it has five tasks. So it's done. All five are done, 100% complete. Project two had, it had five tasks, but we added one, so six tasks. We have three of them marked complete, and so 50%. And then in this case, one is complete out of the five, 20% complete. So you can now hide these fields and your task complete, uh, your task completion percentage, that's a mouthful, give it a shorter name, but this field is uh, now going to uh, update automatically. And so we can prove that just by going into our tasks and checking off a couple. Let's say we moved forward on this project. We now have three of the five tasks completed or 60%, and that's now reflected instantly back on our project level. So this is a great way for you to build a bit of a dashboard inside of your table itself that shows you exactly how far along you are. Now you could go even one step further and add a little bit extra to this. So if you wanted to have a status, like a project status, for example, you could write a simple formula that said, for example, if the task completion percentage equals one, remember this is 100%, so I think one is the right answer here, but we might have to test that. But if it's one, then say project complete, otherwise project pending. Let's give that a shot. And so now if you don't like the numbers, if you want to make it as many words as possible, you can always do a quick formula like this, which is basically saying, hey, when all of those boxes are checked, project complete is automatic. Otherwise, project pending. So we can go ahead and prove this again. Let's check off all the boxes for project two and see if we can get this to change to project complete. Checking off all those boxes, flipping back to our projects, and now we see two projects are complete and one is still in the works. Really awesome use case. None of this requires any automation or integration with other tools. This is all just database structure inside of Airtable using a couple of formulas. Okay, the last thing that we can do to add a little bit more flair to this is create one more view. Let's uh, duplicate this view and we're gonna call this pending projects, or maybe this should be current projects. And we're gonna apply a filter that says, hey, look, Anytime the project status contains the word complete, uh, remove it. So I should say does not contain, excuse me. And so what this is going to do is allow us to instantly only see those projects that are not done, right? And so there's no, no reason to delete projects or anything like that uh, as you complete them. Instead, create a view that shows you your current workload, and then you don't have to be concerned with uh, you know, removing old things. That way you keep your data all in one place 
you don't have to delete anything and yet when you sit down to work on you know your current day or week's work you're only looking at the stuff that needs to be done now all right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.